Okay. So first of all, I just want you guys to look at that picture, that painting of St. Paul. Kind of a grisly old guy with a sword in his hand, sitting at a desk trying to figure out how to talk about this stuff. Could you imagine him, imagine him as your neighbor? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, that, that kind of neighbor next door that you tell your kids to, oh, just... Just ignore him. He's just a little bit on the, on the cantankerous side. Um, so we have, um, here is this, this man. I think, I love this painting. It's, it's out of France. And it, it just kind of shows uh, Paul trying to figure out how to talk about um, what, who Jesus was in his life. It's just stunning. And his, his primary thing, he, he talks about it all through all these letters, that he writes these letters, but really he is longing to be with. Um, it's very personal and it's very communal. It's, it defines our Catholic faith in a lot of depth is that these communities, we pray together. That's um, uh, that's that's the um, uh, kind of just this fundamental reality. And then uh, you know, I Saint Paul just um, you know anybody that says like, oh, faith is easy, <laughs> has never read Saint Paul. He he recognizes that how to speak about Jesus and he and how to think about this is is tough as nails and then of course this this you know practice over testing and knowledge um, so those are the three areas that I just like to maybe help us to that St. Paul helps us embrace our deeper faith and and uh, think about it a little bit so if you go on to the next slide now um, and I, I hope you have your numbered sheet along with you that you got received in the letter. Um, the, um, you know, the first thing I just want to um, high, highlight is, so it's even Paul and Timothy together. Um, it, Paul never really travels alone ever either. Is, but then he writes to all the holy ones in Christ Jesus. The holy ones are saints. You are saints. Um, this, um, it's never about um, small issues. Um, and and it's, it's also the sharing of a very personal faith. I just like you to look look down for a moment at, at verse twenty of the first chapter. My eager expectation and hope is that I shall not be put to shame in any way, but that with my boldness, now as always, Christ will be magnified in my body. Christ will be magnified in my body. We think about. So Mary said that same thing that uh, my soul magnifies the Lord. Think about a magnifying glass and the um, um, how how it brings something close up in that that is what the constant hope is for for Jesus or for for Paul and his reflection is that uh, um, the um, um, the um, uh, the um, um, you're going to find and see Christ more fully in Him. So, if we go on the next slide, uh, faith is not easy. Um, this. Um, um, 
I think to um, one of the things that uh, oh, hold on. yeah, I'm trying to. I don't know how they're doing that. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, so um, this is one of the things that that we're. Um, you know, you hear this line in uh, um, in line 18, where um, Saint Paul is really trying to figure out um, um, that Christ is proclaimed. They have these uh, um, people that are are proclaiming Christ out of selfish ambition, not from pure motives, mm -hmm. thinking that they will cause me trouble in my imprisonment. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's very, this is a real struggle. St. Paul is pretty frank about this going, dang it, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to share this faith. And, and, uh, and I got these people attacking me, but, but it's, it's one of the things where he just, he, he arrived at this at, hey, as long as Christ is being proclaimed, I can, I can do this. Uh, the faith is a relationship with Jesus. One of the things that from a scripture point of view that we think about, you know, we well, oftentimes we think about the word as a Bible and we're the people of the word, but we're actually people of relationship. So as Jesus encountered Paul, or Jesus and, and Paul, Paul was profoundly changed. And because of that, Paul wanted to change, uh, to share that with everybody else. Um, and then, so finally, on the on the final slide, um, um, practice over testing. Um, I think just the five pieces here together uh, that I'd like to highlight. Um, first is because of your partnership for the gospel from the first day until now. Uh, that that movement is that you never have to do this alone. Um, this is why, you know, we, we always speak to the parents first. Um, and then kids, you, you um, receive from your parents. Um, the, um, the, the, you know, and how we grow. So we, we think about this that your love may increase and you discern what is of value. You know, one of, one of the times that, that uh, a friend of mine was telling, telling a story to his child and it, it had this whole series of, of joking about a child trading uh, uh, two dimes for three nickels and, and three nickels for five pennies. And, oh, dad, didn't I do great? Um, well, we, are, we didn't know what they didn't know what the value was yet. So one of the things that as parents you start to discern what is of value in your lives and thinking about that and talking about that. Um, if we look at, at line 27 uh, of this, the um, uh, conduct yourselves in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ. Well, what's that mean? Well, it's a way of acting morally. Um, and then... Uh, I just like to jump down a little bit here, uh, so we don't run out run out too much time here. But um, um, to think about this for a moment from our practice, um, we walk into church and we kneel down on one knee. We call it we call that a genuflection. Uh, it's actually a Greek word to go down on one knee. And we do that because Jesus is in the tabernacle in the church. Uh, one time I had, I had some people say that, well, I guess we genuflect. We always come to church late. We genuflect because the priest is up front. And, uh, and uh, I, I, you know, quickly going, no, 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 no. If, if for some reason the light over the top of the altar is, is out, you... Um, 
do not genuflect or that there's no there's no Eucharist in the tabernacle. You wouldn't genuflect. You only bow. We only genuflect to Christ, to Jesus. And so all of a sudden in this passage, you have this, this poem or ancient song that that they believe that Paul might have received from worshiping communities who prayed the mass before this letter was even written in 55 AD. God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name above every other name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven, on earth and under earth, the earth. So think about that for a moment, that everyone in heaven even is uh, uh, bending their knee to Jesus. Everyone under the earth is bending their knee to Jesus. And we are doing, does that change how we genuflect when we go to mass? So um, I think I'd like to stop there. And there's, if there's any chance for a little feedback on, on um, the letter that you received, was there a portion of the letter that struck you? Um, and why would anyone risk saving the letter? And if you had a chance to talk to St. Paul, what would you ask him? I can't hear you if you're speaking, sorry. Okay, whoop. Well, I still can't hear anybody. I don't know if- Keeping, keeping letters was very risky, right? Yeah. How, how did they, was it on paper? Was it on parch paper? Was it on uh, tablets? It would probably, would have been on, on some type of animal skin, uh, possibly papyrus. Um, it, it depends on, on the scribe and what they would have available. Um, the papyrus, um, those things all deteriorated away in, in not that long a time. Um, the oldest ones we have are on, on animal skins. And a book, you know, obviously it took hundreds of pages to... And it took a lot of, yeah, a lot of animal skins to, um, to, for the Bible. So this was about, this would have been very difficult for Paul to put this together. It wouldn't be yeah. a matter of getting out your number two pencils. Sorry, right? Right. Paul would not have, he, only one time in the letters did we reference to him saying, this is in my, I sign this in my own hand. Um, paper would have been, and writing would have been so expensive that you didn't risk it. You um, had a scribe who was a professional writer actually write the letter. So he, he wrote this letter from prison and you know, he, it just was such, this news was so good to him that he could not not share it. And uh, you know, he, he tried to share it in every way possible. And I, I think it is, you know, just to, as you're looking at that, this um, this verses um, five through eleven of the second chapter, scholars have written entire books on that chapter. Um, it's it they're trying to understand what was Saint Paul and the idea of self-emptying. You know, parents probably understand that the most is when when you would, you know, you'll sacrifice whatever you need to for your kids. Um, that is so. Here, here comes Jesus, who was God. He he self emptied his power in a way. He kind of he contained himself so that he could be within a human being, and and then even accepting death on the cross, which was just shocking to St. Paul. 
as a Roman citizen, St. Paul could not be inflicted the uh, crucifixion. They considered it too, too rough for a Roman citizen. Um, so he was protected from that. But uh, so that was a shock for St. Paul as well. So if they were locking him up to shut him up or to get his spirits down, they didn't succeed. He used this as really a spiritual opportunity to proclaim the gospel or the good news even more. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think that's one of the things that we miss out on in our faith is that um, because somehow I think our culture or, or maybe of our parents is somehow you're supposed to get faith. It's supposed to be easy. Um, the, um, the movement um, where practicing it with challenge actually grows within you and gives you new life. It lifts you up in the midst of it and you get surprised by it rather than, than just being easy. I think the fact that, you know, it was a risk to keep the letter and certainly it was a risk to produce the letter. I think that shows how strong both Paul's faith was and the, the Philippians faith was. Right. You know, so, you know, we think about St. Paul being inspired to write by the Holy Spirit. But we think about this community was also inspired by the Holy Spirit to save it and then to share it eventually with others. You know, just like seeing these going, you know, this is really good news. I got to I got to share this with others. Um I think that idea of being called the holy ones in Christ, they, they were already thinking about we are participating in heaven in some ways. Um, and how do you talk with that? How, how do you talk to your kids about that? Good luck, right? That's, that's uh, we, are, we are both here on earth and also our, our first day in heaven as well. That's what we think about on Sunday as we are, we're opening up to heaven in that way. So I think the one piece that all these letters, even in 55 AD, was already in subtype of mass was already being celebrated. Very strong Jewish roots, but that, that um, witness of the Lord's Supper, um, the, you know, Paul talks about that, as I passed on to you, as I received... You know, at the Last Supper, he, he broke bread and, and, and wine. That, that aspect was always there. So they were celebrating a form of Mass even back then, the Eucharist yeah. and everything? Absolutely. I, I think that you always want to think about the Bible. You are, you are not, um, you know, getting this Bible just figured out magically isn't... Um, you know, your participation in Mass brings you in connection with that early community. And, and as the Bible becomes more life-giving to each point, there's, there's a depth that grows in it. But uh, um, it's the Eucharist first. And then that it, it, the Eucharist helps us understand the Bible at every turn. So whoever... Re so who received the letter from Paul? Was it Timothy or was it someone else then? So it, it was sent. So it says to the holy ones. Um, whoops. It just simply says, so Paul and Timothy were together. They called themselves slaves of Christ to all the holy ones in Christ Jesus. So the holy ones, that means they were baptized in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi. And then the, with the overseers and ministers, overseers is roughly equivalent to presbyters or, or priests, and ministers would have been deacons. So, um, The four runs uh, to the church hierarchy. Well, but, but this letter is to the community. And think about the community that we gather on here is probably the size of this community in Philippi. You know, that and then they it were, been, they it would have been read to the faithful. Potatoes. What's that? It would have been read to the faithful uh, by someone who was, because the most of the people were illiterate, right? And they, they would. Uh, have to be... I wouldn't make that assumption, actually. Okay. Yeah, it's there were 
I think there's the literacy rate was much higher than than we than we think. No, um, it's the um, the knowledge base yet. You know, re yes, reading reading Greek sometimes was hard. Um, they were koine and things like that. But so, how are we doing on time? I don't want to go. Good. Over too yeah, far. I think it's it's about time for us to break out into our small group discussion. We'll take about ten minutes or twelve minutes to do that. Um, Is there anything else that people had questions about or anything? Thank you.